On tonight's episode, find out about this weekend's STR FKR shows. Learn more about a new up-and-coming artist, EMA. And what the legendary Mike Watt has been up to. <laughs> Fusion Fridays right here on KBVR. I'm Maya Holmes. And I'm Brittany Wooten. And, and we're, we're the Blonde Bombshells. Here to give you your weekly music news. One thing that excites me is the idea of bringing noisier stuff to the masses because I think that they can handle it, says EMA, the abbreviated alias for the likes of one Erica M. Anderson. The young rocker is heavy in the process of promoting her forthcoming album, Past Life of Martyred Saints and recently stopped by the Bunk Bar to show Orion what she's all about. According to Ezra Ace Kareff of the Portland Mercury, before Anderson claimed Portland as her newly adopted home, she started out as a South Dakota girl, where she joined a pair of early high school bands, one called Man Hater. Eventually, at the request of her parents, she left her hometown in search of something bigger, and she found it in Los Angeles. After playing her music around for a while, she eventually became part of the city's well-documented DIY scene at The Smell. Later, she performed with Amps for Christ, the project of Henry Barnes from Man is the Bastard, which crossed her path with that of Ezra Buchla, former frontman for the Meishi. Together, the pair started Gowns, a visionary experimental outfit which released one LP in 2007 entitled Red State before splitting up last year. Now on her own, EMA is rocking like never before. Past life of martyred saints is filled with delicate intimacy as well as sheer and utter, utter vocal destruction and is as memorable as it is haunting, so pay attention. STRFKR recently released their long-awaited second album, Reptilians, which came out in March on Polyvinyl. And rather than simply play one show to celebrate the release, they will play back-to-back -to -back, to back nights at three different Portland venues. This return home will wrap up more than a month on the road, their most expansive tour yet. According to Chris Young of Oregon Music News, as of last week, the band sold out 19 gigs, and now they're well into the 20s as they've already sold out all three Portland gigs. Although if you're lucky, you might be able to snag a ticket at the door as these venues often hold on to a handful. Last night, the party began at Holocene as the first of the three nights of STR FKR. Tonight, the Doug Fur Lounge opens their doors at 8 p.m. and Blouse opens the show at 9. And finally, Saturday night, STRFKR will perform at Mississippi Studios with Champagne Champagne and Arohan. Show begins at 9 p.m. and is available to all ages. The good thing about the previous venues is they will certainly satisfy STRFKR's desire to play smaller, sweatier gigs. They are back on tour once again as they pack their bags and jump across the pond to play a string of dates in Western Europe in May before Mexico City and San Fran's Outside Lands Festival. Over the past few years, the subgenre of electronic music known as dubstep migrated from its origins in the UK and has turned a commercial corner in North America. From the likes of Britney Spears to hip hop icon Eve and even to the metal band Korn, everyone seems to be getting into dubstep. Despite the majority of the US's slow to catch on love of the genre, Portland has been grooving to it now for a while. One of the most popular dubstep events in the city is the Crown Room's weekly party, See you Next Tuesday, which has been around for almost two years. DJs and artists from Portland and around the world have come to play at their bass and beat heavy sounds. One of the most fascinating artists of the UK scene, Ramadan Man, performed there this Tuesday. According to Robert Hamm of The Oregonian, the performer, whose real name is David Kennedy, is a DJ producer who has released a slew of 12-inch singles over the past three years under a variety of names, some being Pearson Sound and Shetland. In his music, Kennedy has stripped back many of the recognizable qualities of dubstep and brought back the lighter vintage drum machine sound that drove early techno and house music. Now, he's talking about making his music in new directions and may possibly be, be transitioning away from the name Ramadan Man and only recording and touring as Pearson Sound. Either way, Kennedy said his new work will have a loopier, frothier feel to the point that it might not even be called dubstep anymore. If you missed him at the Crown Room, be sure to catch some of David Kennedy's new music at the clubs and on pop radio. 
under whichever name he decides to go with. Everyone had high hopes for the Brasserie Montmartre when it reopened in November of 2009. It was elegant again, but the bandstand was still in the same old place, removed from most of the people there and separated by a vast open space that overlooked the little used bar on the lower level. According to Oregon Music News, they tried to make it a listening room and had many memorable nights of music, jazz, blues, and soul. Problem was, it never really worked. They closed a few months ago and the business was sold. They plan to give it another try this May with a new setup for just about everything. The music will no longer be at the old bandstand, but rather in front of the place. The other difference is that although they'll hire good people, they're not looking to make it a music venue. The space is not big enough for a drum kit, and they're not planning to feature vocalists. So look for duos and solo piano. But at least a couple of musicians will be able to be seen there. Hopefully this pans out well for the Brasserie Montmartre. The Oregon Zoo's summer show season kicks off on June 23rd this year with Taj Mahal and Joan Osborne performing first. So mark your calendars. According to Ned Lanneman of Portland Mercury, the cave singers have an unusual take on American folk music. Their rewarding third album, No Witch, possesses the broadest sound of any of their recordings thus far, ranging from humble folk to muddy, amped-up destructions of jumping electric blues. When first Cave Singer's demo appeared in 2007, its eerie placidity was something of a shock, coming not long after the dissolution of Seattle dance punk band Pretty Girls Make Graves. That band's bassist Derek Budesco picked up a guitar for the first time and began writing and playing songs with Pete Quirk, his housemate. Their first demo was a tranquil, haunted take on Backwoods Folk, and the first Cave Singer's album, Invitation Songs, came shortly after. The Cave Singers have been working in Seattle on new weird stuff to bring out into the world, but Album No Witch still retains that homespun charm, and the scale of the Cave Singers music remains intimate and communal. The Cave Singers are currently on tour in Europe right now, but be sure to keep up with them at thecavesingers.com. Sadly, the punk world lost one of its great pioneers this week, as X-Ray Specs iconic leader Polystyrene, also known as Marion Joan Elliott said, succumbed to breast cancer at only 53 years of age. She died just one month after the release of her latest solo album, Generation Indigo. As reported by Spinner to Oregon Music News, the British-born feminist singer was a voice of the first-generation London punk scene and also the face of a band that consistently broke away from the norm. X-Ray Speck's album entitled Germ-Free Adolescence is considered to be a landmark work and a primary influence on groups such as Britpop and Riot Girl. Polly always strived to playfully reject the status quo and avoid conformity and complacency at any cost. She will be greatly missed as a presence in the punk world music and also in this world. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome to Locals Live on KBVR Channel 26 or KBVRTV.com. We have a pretty interesting show tonight. This is really happening right now. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. L U V, love you. J K. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. X O. What'd you dream about? Something I did. Are you on your way to the mall? I'm lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. I got no pulse. Shocking. Is it Shocking. Guys at road all the time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. You just buzzed. Just buzzed. You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right. This isn't happening. You'll be fine. Yeah, I feel good. Really. No, not really. Buzz driving. 
Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Thanks for waiting. Let's get back to more music news. Phoebe Snow, whose signature hit Poetry Man established her as a leading light during the singer-songwriter movement and whose swooping vocal acrobatics transcended musical genres, died on Tuesday in Edison, New Jersey at the age of 60. According to Stephen Holden of the New York Times, Poetry Man, a lifting guitar-based original song from her 1974 debut self-titled album, catapulted Miss Snow to fame. The song, with lyrics addressed to a married man, landed the number four spot on Billboard's Hot 100 and led to a Grammy nomination for Miss Snow for Best New Artist. A soaring contralto, Miss Snow was variously labeled a jazz, blues, pop, funk, and gospel artist, depending on the records she released. Few popular singers of her generation combined the technical resources she commanded. She was a renowned interpreter of soul and rock classics, including The Temptations, Shaky Ground, and Aretha Franklin's Do Right Woman, Do Right Man, which Miss Snow sang with a roof-raising power. Years after becoming a mother, her music began to drop, and as her record sales diminished, Miss Snow became a highly sought-after voice on commercial jingles for companies like Michelob, Hallmark, and AT&T. In 2003, she released Natural Wonder, her first album of new original material in 14 years. In 2007, shortly after her daughter's death, Miss Snow appeared at Birdland, the Manhattan Jazz Club, where she delivered a blazing performance that showed her gifts undiminished. We will remember Phoebe Snow as one of the musical greats that helped shape the scene. Last Thursday, it was announced that the Tacoma Symphony Orchestra's longtime musical director, Harvey Felder, will step down at the end of the 2013 to 2014 season. Although Felder's contract, which began in 1993, expires next year, he is staying on to facilitate a national search for a replacement, as stated by the orchestra's board of directors. According to Rosemary Ponaconti of the News Tribune, Felder is leaving to take on new musical projects, but not before being named as the Tacoma Symphony Orchestra's first conductor laureate. As director, Felder not only took the 85-member orchestra from amateur volunteers to a professional level, he also increased the annual performance schedule to six subscription concerts, began the Simply Symphonic Educational Series for elementary school children, and held workshops for high school students in outlying districts such as Puyallup. Recently, Felder also worked with logo composer Greg Yoltz on the orchestra's first full-length commissioned concerto. After leaving the orchestra, Felder intends to work on new musical projects, such as a national chamber orchestra slated to debut in 2012. The Tacoma Symphony Orchestra will conclude with its current season in an all-Russian concert featuring pianist Evram Raychart this Saturday, April 30th, so don't miss out. Starting out as a kid in San Pedro, California, bassist Mike Watt along with guitarist Dee Boone and drummer George Hurley formed The Minutemen. According to Kevin Friedman of Oregon Live, the name is a joke on the length of their songs and became one of the most seminal West Coast punk bands of the 80s. Tragically, Boone died in a car accident after recording their fourth album, Three Way Tie for Last. Dismayed at the loss of his closest friend, Watt wasn't sure if there was any point in playing further. Fortunately, his friend Thurston Moore of Sonic Youth convinced him otherwise by inviting him to New York to add a few bass lines to their seminal noise rock album, Evil. Before long, a reinvigorated Watt formed Firehose, an almost jazzy post-rock but still kind of punk band that was widely respected within the alternative rock scene of the late 80s. After several albums and endless van tours, that band ran its course, but Watt had become a legend. Since then, Watt has made a career alternating between projects under his own name and as a basis for an impressive array of rock legends. He also played bass on a half dozen tracks for American Idol winner Kelly Clarkson's album, my December. His latest band, The Missing Men, refers to a 2005 European tour on which his then band, The Second Men, could not participate. His last three releases have been self-described operas, with one centered around a life-threatening illness Watt recovered from at the beginning of the millennia. Watt and The Missing Men played a show last Monday at the Doug Fir Lounge in Portland, but if you missed that, make sure to check out MikeWatt.com for more legendary music. Last Thursday, it was announced that the Tacoma Symphony Orchestra's longtime musical director, Harvey Felder, will step down at the end of the 2013 to 2014 season. Although Felder's contract, which began in 1993, expires next year, he is staying on to facilitate a national search for a replacement, as stated by the orchestra's board of directors. According to Rosemary Ponaconti of the News Tribune, 
Felder is leaving to take on new musical projects, but not before being named as the Tacoma Symphony's Orchestra's first conductor laureate. As director, Felder not only took the 85-member orchestra from amateur volunteers to a professional level, he also increased the annual performance schedule to six subscription concerts, began the Simply Symphonic educational series for elementary school children, and held workshops for high school students in outlying districts such as Puyallup. Recently, Felder also worked with local composer Greg Utes on the orchestra's first full-length commission concerto. After leaving the orchestra, Felder intends to work on new musical projects, such as a National Chamber Orchestra slated to debut in 2012. The Tacoma Symphony Orchestra will conclude its current season with an all-Russian concert featuring pianist Aviram Reichert this Saturday, April 30th. So don't miss out. Corvallis acoustic band Cooper Hollow has an interesting outlook on their music career. According to Tyler Hansen of the Gazette Times, they do it for their love of playing music rather than promoting themselves as a business or a band. Not every band is afforded the same carefree style, but Cooper Hollow colors itself fortunate to choose live gigs at its leisure. Last week, they played an acoustic show at the Benton Center on Polk, one of their favorite venues to play at due to the relaxed atmosphere. The diverse band consists of Clark on mandolin, vocals, and guitar, John Frank, the upright bass player, Jim Hockenhole on fiddle, lead vocals, and guitar, and Paul Shearer playing guitar, banjo, harmonica, and vocals. Cooper Hollow officially formed about five years ago after the members who are spread from Monroe to Sheridan played together for some time at weekly jam sessions near Dallas. The casual setting fostered their collective skills and laid-back approach. The Benton Center Acoustic Showcase concludes its season on May 20th with a concert by Corvallis folk singers Tom and Ellen DeMarest. Cooper Hollow's next scheduled performance will be May 27th as part of the best-seller Coffee House series at First United Methodist Church in Corvallis. Be sure to check out this colorful band. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Mom! Mom! What? You can't find Ichabod. What? You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is drunk driving. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. You believe this guy? Are you trying to start a wildfire? Sorry. Pass the honey. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. The blondes are back. Enjoy. Santa Cruz's The Devil Makes Three is an unconventional group in the world of folk. This is because they are a drummerless acoustic trio consisting of two guitarists and a string bass. Their following consists of everyone from hipsters to punk rockers and even fans of old-timey jug bands and bluegrass. According to Vanessa Salvia of Eugene Weekly, The Devil Makes Three is a band deeply rooted in country music, but it's impossible to deny their punk rock sound as well. The band is comprised of stand-up bassist Lucia Torino, guitarist Pete Bernard, and guitarist Cooper McBean. 
the latter two having first met in 8th grade in Vermont, where they began playing punk songs. The group has so far released a total of four full-length albums. Their latest, which was four years in the making, is entitled Do Wrong Right and was released in 2009. The trio now calls upon their talents together to create their twangy, three-part harmonizing back porch bluegrass sound that has brought them to success. The California-based band stopped by the Wow Hall this Saturday and brought down the house alongside Brownbird. And if you ask me, these crooners sound like they're just the right band to get you in the mood for those long, lazy summer days that are right around the corner. Gary Rupert, Lynn Benton Community College's Dean of Instruction, is retiring after 36 years and has decided to say goodbye with one last stage performance. As a classically trained pianist, Rupert will offer his friends and family and the community a farewell concert tonight at 7.30 p.m. in LBCC's Russell Tripp Performance Center. According to Steve Lathrop of the Gazette Times, he's been working hard to prepare for the event. Rupert has tried to practice for at least one or two hours every day. Originally hired at LBCC as a part-time music instructor in 1974, Rupert was made a contracted instructor the following year. Since then, he has been instrumental in the growth of their liberal arts program. At LBCC, Rupert taught music and speech communication, was involved with musical theater, and has been Dean of Instruction since 1998. He also earned the LBCC Distinguished Staff Award in 2009. While Rupert is no stranger to performing at LBCC, this concert will be his first time on stage in nearly four years. The concert will include Rupert's two favorite genres, classical and jazz. He will feature music by Debussy, Chopin, and Ravel, and jazz works by Bill Evans, Sheik Korea, and Herbie Hancock. Rupert's wife of 38 years and talented vocalist Karen will join him on stage for two of those numbers. Rupert thinks it will be a proper farewell, saying, quote, It's hard to just end more than 30 years of memories and move on. I like this way of saying goodbye. Philadelphia-born artist G-Love is no ordinary music masher or tune crooner. Love, whose real name is Garrett Dutton, is an eclectic musician who writes his own material and also dares to cover the songs of the greats, as evidenced on his new album called Fixin' the Die. According to Lynn Margolis of The Source Weekly, on it, Love sings everything from blues to hip-hop and covers the likes of Paul Simon, Velvet Underground, and Lou Reed, just to name a few. On this album, Love creates a laid-back funk soul vibe and gets back to his roots, which go way back. G-Love accomplishes a lot. He's currently part of a social band, The Special Sauce. He's done recordings for the OK label, appeared on pal Jack Johnson's Brush Fire Records, and invited the Abbott Brothers to pr produce and perform on his first album called G-Love. On his newest album, G-Love is also accompanied by the Abbott Brothers, with Scott on banjo, drums, and vocals, and Seth on guitar, keyboards, and vocals. Also appearing on the album is Love's friend Bob Crawford on bass, and Special Sauce's Jeff Clemens on the drums. The result? a stripped-down elemental sound professing the joys of love that was captured and recorded in only nine days. G-Love gave the audience a taste of his album last Thursday at the Domino Room alongside Special Sauce and the Bell Brigade, and it sounds like it was a show that you absolutely did not want to miss. Well, that's all the music news we have for you this week. Stay tuned for music videos and a new episode of Locals Live. See you next week!